Hi guys, it's me, Vance. Um, today is April 7th, 2019, and in the church, this is known as Passion Sunday, and boy, am I passionate about the things I'm going to be talking about in this video. So, within the last year or two, I've been making videos where I've been talking about my journey to becoming a priest in the Anglican Church, in the Anglican Communion of the Christian Faith, and, um... I haven't made any update videos in a while, mainly because I've just been very busy with work and other things and I haven't gotten around to making an update video. I think the last time I talked about my journey to the priesthood, I was talking about going to the Conference of Ministry for the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida, which was last year. And, um, but that's a completely different topic. Um, basically what I want to talk about in this video is that, you know, I used to go to St. John's Episcopal Church in Kissimmee. But now I'm going to two churches. I'm going to a church, which is basically in the living room of the priest, Father Tim, which is called St. Andrew's Anglican Church. And I also go to a cathedral church in Port St. John, which is near Coco, Coco Beach in Florida. And it's the St. Patrick's Anglican Catholic Cathedral. And um, basically, this is one of those churches where, you know, they don't really have a lot of clergymen. They don't have a lot of parishioners. I mean, there's still a good number of people who go to church, but there's not a whole lot of people, as I would imagine that there would be, and especially in a cathedral. Um, basically, um, as far as the clergy goes, we have three clergymen. We have a bishop, and we have a priest, Father Tim, and we have a deacon. And within the last few weeks, we've been talking about our deacon, Deacon Chet, eventually becoming a priest in our church. Then we would have a bishop and two priests. And um, with this clergy, with the deacon, priest, and bishop, there's two lay ministers that serve with them, myself and a man named John. And there's been talks about us becoming subdeacons in the church. And um, basically... I've spoken to the bishop when we were having lunch at an Italian restaurant earlier today, and basically he said that more than likely these things are going to take place after an Anglican synod or a meeting of bishops, which is supposed to take place this August coming up, which means for me right now, if I want to attend that synod, I have to, um, I have to speak to my schedule liaison at my job to see about trying to get some um, free time in August, maybe unpaid vacation time, because the company that I work for, you know, they do things in a certain way to where they got to work with everybody, and, you know, when certain situations happen, you know, they're willing to pull strings every once in a while and do this and do that, but, you know, they got to think about the benefits of the company, because if the company suffers, then there's, you know, employees are not going to get their paychecks, so... You got to think about all these other things. But basically, you know, I want to at least let them know that there is a synod going on in August and that I want to try and attend that because this is essential to my journey to the priesthood in the Anglican Church. You know, I need to do the things that I need to do so that I can become a priest because that's basically my main goal right now is I want to be a priest. You know, eventually in the future, I would like to become a bishop. But for now, you know, I would be happy at least being an assistant priest or an associate pastor for the rest of my life. That much I would ask for. And um, so basically, yeah. Now, I'm not sure how everything's going to work out. You know, I don't want to get everyone's hopes up. I don't want people to think, oh, he's really going to become a subdeacon. You know, I mean, there's no reason for me to think that it's not going to happen. I honestly believe that, you know, once we go through the Synod and once we're asked questions by the bishop, um, you know, once, you know, they ask us certain questions and they find out a little more about us, you know, they'll realize that, you know, we're qualified to become subdeacons. But, um, you know, you know, every establishment, they have their own rules as to how things are supposed to work. Like, for example, as opposed to the Anglican Church, in the Roman Catholic Church, if you're going to be a priest, the number one thing that you got to do is you got to take the vow of celibacy, which means, well, for the most part, it's supposed to mean that you're not supposed to have sex at all. But since being married means that every once in a while, a husband and wife can have sex, 
they figured that it's best that the priest remain single for the rest of his life, or at least for as long as he's going to be an ordained minister in the church. If he decides to leave the church, then he can become married if he wants, because he's not a priest anymore, at least not an active, an active minister in the church, you know. It is possible, of course, to be married and be celibate, but sometimes it's not always, you know, likely. But anyway, the point is, is that, you know, it's possible that, you know, maybe they may think I'm not qualified to be a subdeacon just yet because, you know, I still don't have my bachelor's degree and I might be too young. You know, they may have their reasons, so I don't know. So I don't want to make a video saying, hey, I'm going to be a subdeacon by the end of the year. And then when the end of the year comes, I'm still just a average lay lay minister a lay reader in the church you know i don't want to get i don't want to get everyone's hopes up but from everything that we've been talking about so far more than likely it's possible that deacon chet is going to eventually become a priest and that my fellow lay minister john and i are more than likely going to become subdeacons so i'm very happy about this and even though my goal is to become a priest you know when I become a subdeacon, I'm going to savor every single moment of being a subdeacon. I'm going to cherish every single minute that I'm a subdeacon. And even when I become a deacon, you know, because, you know, my goal is to become a priest and, you know, I'm not going to rest until I fulfill that goal. I feel that that's my calling is to be a priest. You know, I'm not going to rest until the bishop lays his hand on me and say, you are a priest. But at the same time, you know, for as long as I'm going to be a subdeacon and eventually a deacon, you know, I'm going to savor every single moment. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to use it to my benefit. I'm going to, not just my benefit, but for the benefit of the church, you know, because what a, what a minister in the church does, it's not just for the minister himself, but it's also for the people in the church, because that's what a minister is supposed to be. He's supposed to be there for the flock. Ministers, as far as I'm concerned, are supposed to be assistants to the shepherd, the good shepherd himself, Jesus Christ. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be assistants, if anything else, to the shepherd in assisting him to help with the flock, to assist the flock in following their shepherd to heaven, if that makes any sense. So that's what's going on. Um, Chances are that towards the end of the year, I would say maybe in September or October, I should be a subdeacon in the church with my fellow lay minister, um, John. So I'll keep you updated. This is an essential part to me becoming a priest because, you know, before you can become a priest, you have to be a deacon. And before you become a deacon, you know, you have to be a lay minister in the church, which also includes being a subdeacon. Subdeacons are considered to be lay ministers, and that's usually the last order of lay ministry before you become a deacon, thus you cross over from lay ministry to holy orders. I think it's called laity, and if I'm right, then you go from laity to holy orders to be a clergyman. So that's what's going on, and I'm very happy about this. I'm very excited about this, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. So like I said before, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll let you know how things happen. You know, one of the things I hope to do when I go to the Synod is I hope I can get some videos and some pictures so I can share the pictures on Facebook and so I can share the videos here on YouTube because one of the things I like to do with my videos is I like to document my life. I like to document everything that I do. You know, the only, the only regrets that I had in life so far is that I wasn't interested in video recording when I was younger because then I would have recorded my adventures in Michigan and I would have loved to share my childhood with you guys, but it's all in the past. I'm interested in filming now, like I'm doing right now, and I'm filming my life right now, and so far you guys have been seeing my journey in my adulthood and my life so far, and part of that is being in the Anglican Church and working my way to becoming a priest in the Anglican Church, and the rest is history. And of course, occasional times when I go to Disney World, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, wherever I go, um, I'm yet to make videos of me going to Universal and SeaWorld and anywhere else, if they allow it. You know, so there's that. So that's what's going on. And like I said, I'll keep you posted. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye and God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Oh, by the way, um, did you happen to notice my new shirt? I got this for Christmas. It's pretty much a black dress shirt. I would button it up here, but I think it would, it would choke me. I can try it now. 
Oh my gosh, I think that's hurting my Adam's apple. Okay, no, that's not a good idea. But I can at least wear it like this. And I think I look good this way, you know? I like this shirt. It was a Christmas present. Do I look like Johnny Cash? Am I going for a Johnny Cash look? Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. So there you go.